Welcome to the 7 Days Podcast. I am Boy 13 Jim, Jim for short. And welcome, guys. I'll be talking about SummerSlam this Sunday. I will be giving you guys my SummerSlam predictions in preview. And also, I'll be talking about Raw and SmackDown. A little bit Raw, more of SmackDown. Because I'm recording this after I just watched SmackDown. Well, at least like 2-3 hours after SmackDown, you know. I went and showered after. Because after watching that, I needed a freaking shower. Okay? So... Hope you guys will stay along and, and, you know, listen for what I got to say. And, you know, you guys give your opinions on the things I talk about. You know, apparently uh, 2K has announced that, that the roster reveal will happen on uh, August 16th, which is tomorrow. Or, no, today. I don't, don't want to say tomorrow. Today. Um, I can't wait for that. See what happens. I hope there's entrances. I love entrances when it comes to hype for the video game, to be honest with you guys. But, like, we'll see what happens. Um, let's start with Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw, not much. Monday Night Raw is a solid show for me. Um, you know, there was there was ups and downs. As always, you know, I'm not talking about the what culture show. Um, ups and downs in the show. There was, uh, like, ups. Uh, the Fatal 4-Way uh, confrontation at the end of the show. Up. Um, you know, Finn Balor announcing that the Demon will be coming through this Sunday. Down. Balor versus uh, uh, Bray Wyatt. On Raw, before SummerSlam, up, Tozawa getting a Cruiserweight Championship win, but down, the championship match happening on Raw, up, um, the Banks in a great match against, uh, Nia Jax, you know, winner faces Alexa Bliss this Sunday on pay-per-view, that's a up, what's a down, though, is Big Cass and Big Show and Enzo Amore. That's all a big ass down, okay? Um, that that's basically it, I think. Uh, the Intercontinental Champion not having a match on the Sunday, but then again, they don't need to add another match. I feel like they might do an impromptu match, Jordan versus Miss. I won't be surprised. I could see it now. I will be surprised if we see. Kurt Angle backstage talking with Jason Jordan saying, you know, it was nice for you to have that win on Raw with the six-man tag. And then The Miz comes through and then they start bickering back and forth. And then Kurt Angle suddenly just makes an Intercontinental title match on the show. I, I honestly see that. I really do. You know, I see that. So let's see if it'll happen or not. Most likely it won't happen, but I do see that happening this Sunday. Are you, are you good? Are you good, bro? Um... Uh, the uh, the fatal four way confrontation. You know, Brock came in. You know, same shit. But <laughs> Heyman, I can't lie. Same thing. Um, Paul Heyman. He's Brock Lesnar. If he doesn't win, we leave WWE. Locked up in a cage. Wink, wink. <laughs> that was basically it. And then Joe comes in. I'm gonna put you to sleep, and I'm gonna win the title. Braun comes in, said I'm the last man standing. Bro, Joe Samoa Joe said, bro, you last man standing. Um. You could barely get up to your feet while I was putting Roman Reigns to sleep. And that rhyme. Watch out. Uh, and then Roman Reigns came out and just speared Joe. And then Braun came with a power slam on Roman Reigns. And then Braun and Brock had a little thing going on. Now, that was basically it with the segment. It was a great segment. Uh, I'm making it sound like it, it, it wasn't great. If you watch the entire thing, it was great. It's just that I'm not in the mood to put in full detail. And tell you in full detail how it went down. I don't need to do that. I honestly don't. Dean and Seth finally embracing on Raw. That was th- that was the best thing to begin the show. That was, that was the best 19 minutes of Raw I've ever seen in a while. I can't lie to you, right? Um, like like Dean Ambrose is just asking questions on why is Seth Rollins playing games. Seth Rollins saying, "I'm the one playing games. You're the one that saved me one week, and then you're not there the next week." And then uh, and then they brawl it out because because Dean Ambrose put up the fist and Seth didn't accept it. And after they, they brought it out, the champs came through. Cesaro and Sheamus beat them up. There was a phone at the barricade. By the way, if anyone still saw that, I mean I, I'm still confused, right? And then they brawl it out. Ambrose and Rollins coexist, and then they're standing tall. And then finally, I mean one put the fist out, one declines. One put the fist, one puts the fist, uh, put the fist out, one declines, and then they both do it simultaneously. Great moment. The crowd popped. I popped. It was a great moment. I cannot lie. And then Kurt Angle comes out and he's like, yeah, this uh, this uh, little thing going on here. Yeah, Dean Ambrose and uh, and uh, Seth Rollins team up because they're going to face the champs, Cesaro and Sheamus, for the tag team title. So, let's see. 
a Monday Night Raw. Oh, we also had the Balor versus Bray. You know, that, that I didn't really care. But at the end, Bray Wyatt got a clean win. And Balor got poured, uh, got blood poured on him. Or the red liquid or what do you call it? Paint, you know. <laughs> he had paint uh, poured on him. Basically, and then he went to Kurt Angle and says I want, uh, he would get his rematch to that beautiful, beautiful lady, Charlie. Is it Charlie? Yeah, it's Charlie Caruso, right? Yeah. She's thick. <laughs> okay, but yeah, he went to Kurt Angle and said, look, I'm getting my rematch, and Bray Wyatt likes to talk about his demons. Well, guess what? This Sunday, the de my demon. It's gonna come out to play, so that's basically it. Big cast, talk and talk, crowd boo the absolute crap out of Big Cass. Like every time he puts the mic, like, it was Roman Reigns after WrestleMania type type thing. Okay, he puts the mic to his mouth, but this time Cass, whenever he speaks, that's when the crowd goes nuts. So every time Big Cass says this Sunday at SummerSlam, the crowd would cut him off. That was a great thing. I will not, I will not let that go. That was a great thing. But as it went on, it's like, okay, the crowd's kind of ruining it for me. You know, they're just obnoxiously booing Big Cass. I mean, I get it, he's a heel, but relax, let the man say what he got to say, you know? You know, Big Cass is like, look, I could stay here all day, you know? It's all, it's up to you. I don't want, like, I'm the one getting paid. Y'all y'all paid to, to come here and boo me, even though that's not even, a, that's not even worth your time anyway, you know? And then Enzo comes out, he does his thing, Big Cass is making fun of Enzo, saying, hi, you're so funny, how about you come to the ring and say all that funny stuff to me in my face, right? And then Big Show comes through, and then Big Cass and Big Show and the club brought it out, Big Cass attacks his right hand, and yeah, Big Show says he's not going to miss SummerSlam, even though he's been through worse, all that jazz. So, oh, jeez, I do not like this feud at all, at all, I really don't. Like, I, I like all three. Well, mostly Big Cass and Big Show. Enzo, not so much. Um, but still, I like I like all three of them. Just that I just don't care. I get it. Enzo wants revenge. But Enzo is doing what Big Cass said. Enzo has to rely on someone else. Has to rely on a big dude. Right? Can't fend for himself, right? That's what Big Cass practically said in, the, in his promo weeks ago or months ago, right? Um, Enzo Moore is still doing that. He's getting someone big on his side, someone to replace Big Cass practically. It's practically, uh, let's see, it's like Vince McMahon, whenever a top star leaves on bad terms, Vince McMahon has to freaking replace him, right? Basically that, but at least when Vince does it, it's better because it, it creates uh, it creates a bigger star like a Stone Cold, uh, Triple H, uh, you know, Rock, you know, Taker gets bigger than before, you know, stuff like that, you know. And so he has Big Show, who's already established, by the way. You know, it's like if you're gonna get if you're gonna get a, a big dude, get someone new. And then Big Cass had the balls, the balls, the guts to say, "Oh, I'm the." Biggest, best dude, uh, biggest, uh, no, 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 I'm the best big man, uh, today. I'm like, oh, really? Best big man. Okay. Um, Big Cash. I even tweeted this that night on, my, on Monday night. I said, um, Big Cash, hold up. Um, you do know, you heard, you heard of Braun Strowman, right? This guy, you, you heard the, you heard the, I'm not finished with you, you know, all, all that, flipping ambulance and, you know, getting, getting put in an ambulance and then crash into a trailer, you know, all that, you know, the guy that beat Roman Reigns twice on pay-per-view, yeah, yeah, all of that, yeah, yeah, that guy, that's going to fight for the Universal title this Sunday, yeah, him, yeah, that big guy, he's the best big man today. Not you, Big Cash. You haven't done Dilly Squat yet. I don't know why you're saying all that jazz. I get it. You gotta feed your ego. But still. Come on. Come on. That's not even realistic to say. Come on. Just say like you're... I don't know. You're the best uh, tall guy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Just say something like that. I don't know. Um, 
Besides all that, Raw was a solid show. Those ups and downs, like I said, you know, the Cruiserweights, uh, I, I didn't watch it. I came back in time to see Tozawa hit the senton and beat Neville for the title. Now, I was kind of tired of Neville holding the championship months ago. I'm not going to lie to you. I A part of me was like, okay, I'm done. Like, just just lose. But then a, then a part of me kind of reminded, like, no, he's great at what he does. Don't let him lose the title yet. <laughs> you know? So kind of that, that's, how, that's how I felt when he lost the championship. So, so after all that, I will say that... Maybe Neville might get back the championship. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he might get it back this Sunday. Just like, I don't know if Balor's going to get his win back uh, this Sunday. I honestly don't know. But we'll have to see. Now, Raw, solid show. Ten minutes. All right. Oh, I might have to spend like 20 minutes on SmackDown Live. Not really. Um, So we begin the show with the Mother Day Maharaja. Right. You, you notice how I'm reviewing Raw, uh, not Raw, I did review Raw, go check that out on my channel, but SmackDown, I'm reviewing SmackDown because I did not review it last night, because I don't need to, if SmackDown was a failure like last night, I don't, I do not want to review failures, so, whenever Raw or SmackDown sucks, or even a pay-per-view sucks, I'm not reviewing it at all. I don't like to rev. I want to review NXT, uh, uh, NXT uh, takeovers. I'm just lazy. <laughs> That's the problem. I'm just lazy. I, I'm just lazy. You know, uh, but but as far as Raw, SmackDown, pay per view, don't matter. If it sucks, Battleground. I did not do review because it sucked. I'm not doing it. Why do I need to do it? Because it, it like Battleground last year was a great pay per view. Battleground two years ago, decent pay per view. This year's pay per view. Awful. Awful. Last year's SummerSlam, to me, was a good SummerSlam. Two years ago was a good SummerSlam. This year's SummerSlam, not looking to be good at all. There's only about three matches from Raw I actually care. Or, yeah, yeah three. Uh, we got the women's title match. We have the universal title match. And the tag team, Raw tag team uh, title match. That's all I care for about. That's all I care about from Raw. SmackDown Live, uh, there's only like one match. No, two match. There's two matches. Two matches from SmackDown Live I care about. There's uh, Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. And the tag team titles, the Usos and the New Day. Even though I'm sick of the New Day, the Usos are the reason why I'm watching this match. Just saying, okay? So we were clear. Uh, um, oh, oh yeah, maybe Styles, Styles and Owens and Shane. Just I, I'm, I'm forgetting about that. I keep forgetting about that match because, I don't know, we keep seeing that match so many times, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like I, like I always complain about these feuds. Sometimes, you know, they're going on for too long. But yeah, I back up Cena and Orton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because okay, you gotta give me this. When I first started watching WWE, but I didn't do research. I do. I always do research. Research now, whenever it's something I don't know or I'm not. I don't have any clear information about. So. Before I did research about Cena and Orton and, and uh, about their past, right? I didn't know that they fought so many times within the past within the past three years, uh, from 2007 to 2009. I didn't know. So when I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I remember. I, I was I I always saw Triple H to be that guy to put down Randy Orton because he keeps saying that he knows Randy Orton from Evolution days. I'm like, okay, let's see what he got. And Triple H failed. He didn't get the job done. Um, and then John Cena came into the fray. I'm like, okay, John Cena might be the one. Yes, this guy. I like this guy. I was just like him and, and all that crap, you know? So I'm like, yeah, John Cena's going to be the one. Cena would be the one at breaking point, but then he'll lose it to Hell in the Cell, but then at bragging rights, get it back. So, yeah. I would always like, I will always back up Cena and Orton. I will always do that because it's it's something, it's a part of my childhood to me that I will not let go. I'm sorry. But Sasha and Charlotte, I got tired of that after SummerSlam. Um, you know, Kevin Owens and AJ Styles, I'm waiting for this to be over, you know? It's been going on since freaking May. We're in August. August. It's been going on for three months. I'm tired of it already. Come on. You have so much talent on SmackDown Live. 
give me new... I, I should be seeing new things every week. Not, okay, not every week. But, like, at least three out of the four times a month. Please. Please. I should be seeing Luke Harper versus uh, AJ Styles. Or, or, sorry, we already had that. My bad. Uh, AJ Styles versus... Um, Someone, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Luke Harper taking on Kevin Owens, something like that. I mean, some. I mean, that could be a great match. Harper versus Owens, dude. They're both athletic as hell. You know, Harper doing uh slingshot sentons and Kevin Owens doing frog splashes and cannonballs. You know, like these guys are are athletic as hell. Owens versus Harper is a is a good match to me. You know. I even said that uh, that AJ Styles versus Chad Gable was a technical dream match, and it did happen. Yes, it did. Great match. Uh, the, everybody kept saying it was a great match. You're damn right. Chad Gable and, and AJ Styles, they both have the technical technique of of their of their of their style of wrestling. Right? They have that style in their uh, repertoire, so to speak. So. It would be phenomenal for them to go at it. So I need to see a little bit of variety on SmackDown Live and Raw. You know, I don't mind seeing people that we don't give a crap about at all on TV. For example, Emma versus Mickey James. That's something I never thought that would happen, but it happened. Sloppy little, sloppy little match on Raw on Monday, but still, at least, at least it gave them time on TV. I can respect that, and I actually appreciate that. You know, it may not, I may not like it, but at least I can appreciate the fact that there, it's something different. That That's what I can say. Like the same thing with Mahal. Mahal being champion is something different. Yes, it sucks, but <laughs> I can at least say, look, it's different. It's something new, but it's one of those things where like, okay, it's something new or something different, but in the end, it sucks. That's basically Mahal as a WWE champion. So... SmackDown Live. AJ Styles had to apologize to Shane. What happened? Shane got kicked in the face by Kevin Owens. Saw that coming. Because if AJ hit him one week, Kevin Owens going to hit him the next week. So that way, Kevin, uh, Shane McMahon has equal hatred for both men. Because they struck on him twice. Or, or they struck on him each week. Um, Natty getting a clean victory over Be uh, Becky Lynch was a shocker to me. Because I didn't see that coming. But yeah, Natalia beats Becky with the sharpshooter. Makes her tap, by the way. Um... I gotta say this. I gotta say this. I love Naomi. I do. I saw her being champion since 2014. And that was when the Divas were going around. And that was when Paige was champion, by the way. And that was when that was around WrestleMania time. I saw Naomi as champion. Um, I knew she was the star out of the Funkadactyls. I didn't, I, Cameron, that's, <laughs> nope. But, yeah, uh, I, I saw Naomi being the champion out of two. I'm not, the, like, no disrespect to Cameron, you know. I feel like, I always, I always felt like in NXT, when she was in NXT, I feel like she could do a little, a little bit more better. Like, she can get better. Like, uh, she focused, you know, but I feel like, you know, I, uh, JD from New York said this uh, about Eva Marie how they like, or about Lana how like, you know, they're girly girls. You know, they they, they don't want to get pit. You know, that's why Charlotte is one of the greatest in ring performers we have today because she's not afraid to take risks. She's not afraid to get hit and take bump nasty bumps. People like Eva Marie, people like uh, Cameron. You know, they they don't they don't they don't belong in a ring to me. They don't. I'm just saying. But yeah, Naomi, uh, I knew she would be champion from day one. And and since then, I always hoped that one day she would. And then when she finally did, that's great. You know, it's great to see her champion. It's great to see her have fun. It's great to see her in the way she is. But her coming out on SmackDown was very unnecessary and obnoxious, I might add. We're having a match coming through in mere moments. What does she do? She comes out. She's like, oh, the intention's not on me now. Oh, oh, oh motherfucker. Oh, hold on. Wait a second. Uh, 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 she's like, 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 like she's Emma, you know? Like she always points at herself saying, pay attention to me. It's all about me, right? That's basically Naomi. Naomi came out for no reason. All right, she can she can she can just scout her opponent in the back like everyone else, but no, 
bring the attention to me. You know, me and my entrance, me and my dreadlocks coming out and dancing, busting out these dance moves, right? Sliding down the 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 the, the, the ramp, you know, with their glow and their glowness, and then she coming through, going on the apron, getting off the apron, and going to the to the announce table. Um, if you're going to the announce table, go to the announce table. Don't have to go to the ring, get on the apron, get off the apron, and then go to the damn announce table. Wasting so much time. Damn. I, I, that's just that was just a pet peeve of mine on on yesterday's show. I'm just saying. So yeah, then 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 Natalia got the win clean, simple. Okay, so after that, um, I did not see uh, Sami Zayn. I did not see. Uh, uh, you're still the greatest, greatest. You know, Mike Canellis and Maria Canellis, which, thank God, I can't stand them. Get, like, I, I don't want to see them, bro. I like the Bennets. I like both Maria and Mike. But the problem is, the problem is, they suck. They suck. Go down to NXT and try to get over there and then come back. Don't come to SmackDown thinking that you're going to be the greatest, greatest ever. No, 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 that's not working. That, sorry. Re, uh, boop, delete. Come on. Go back. Go back. Uh, uh, rewind. Rewind. You know, abort. You know, all that stuff. Just, just leave. Just go NXT. Get better and come back. I don't believe Mike Bennett. Doing all this lovey, lovey, dovey stuff. When I just saw him a couple of months ago on, on, on Impact, freaking at a wedding ceremony, drunk. <laughs> How am I gonna take a dude that's all lovey dovey who just who was just at a wedding ceremony, drunk? Are you serious? Like, go watch that back. That was funny. Mike Bennett drunk on Impact. I swear to God, that was the most funniest shit. Like, you know, Brax is under being forced to marry uh, Chelsea Green, whatever her name is. And then, you know, he declined her because, you know, Allie looked phenomenal that night. And then, you know, Maria tried to be like, look, bro, if you don't marry Chelsea, then Maria, uh, the, uh, Allie's going to get fired. You know, all that stuff. Like, Mike Bennett is just sipping on the champagne like no tomorrow, law. Like, like, I remember when I went to, um, like, my friend took me out to um, this party somewhere downtown, right, for me, for my birthday, right? And, like, I remember this chick that was there, this Italian chick, good looking, by the way. She would not let go of the champagne or the wine. She would not let go of the wine. That... She reminded me of Bennett because she would not let go. She kept sipping on the fucking drink. That was hilarious, bro. But yeah, thank God we didn't see Canellis's at all. Uh, let's see, the tag champions, the Usos. I'm, t- I'm tired of New Day. I'm tired of New Day, to be honest with y'all. I'm tired of them. I still like them, but I'm just tired of the shtick. You know, they come out, uh, uh, wherever we are, don't you dare be sour. Uh, clap for the three-time champ, champ, feel the power. Come out, clap, twerk, and, and gyro, and then shake their hips and all that crap, and then they come to the ring, and then, hoo, hoo, hoo. Because New Day rocks, and all that stuff. And then, that, repeat, 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 repeat. I'm tired of that, bro. Usos, what do they do? They just have their music playing and they just come to the ring. That's it. Simple. Why can't we get that? <laughs> just go to the ring. Do what you gotta do. Leave. Don't have to do all that all that nonsense. Making ridiculous jokes and, and references that some people are gonna let that go over their head. Come on, man. I still like the New Day. I'm just tired of the shit. I'm just tired of the stuff, okay? You know, it's doing the same thing over and over again. I'm just saying. So, the Usos beat Kofi and Woods tonight, uh, or yesterday, right? So, that tells me that the Usos are not winning this Sunday. That's all I can say about that. And then we get to we get to the main event. Mahal, Cena. What happened? Cena hit the AA on Mahal. Mahal kicked out. Cena hit the Super AA on Mahal. Mahal got saved by Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin made the match end in disqualification. And, yeah. Um, by the way, uh, uh, Tom Phillips, JBL, shut your hole. Please. 
shut your hole. Shut your freaking hole. Todd Phillips, if you could, please F your, uh, face F yourself, okay? Face F, face F your own face. Because I can't take of your crap anymore. Oh, the biggest smash on SmackDown. Are you serious? So, Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar. It is not the greatest match, the biggest match on SmackDown Live history. Or, or, uh, the triple threat. AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, and Dolph Ziggler. That wasn't a great trouble with that. That wasn't a great title match. That was a great match. Great main event on SmackDown. Nakamura and Cena two weeks ago. No? Not a great match? Okay. Okay. Not not a big match? Okay. 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 You guys got my point. Mahal and Cena. <sighs> Dude, if this was fucking last year and these guys went at it, they would not be saying this is the greatest match, biggest match of all time. On SmackDown Live history ever. They will not be saying that. They'll just be like, oh, John Cena, you know, just getting beat up. And then he sees final, final moves of Doom. And then he gets, he gets the win. Basically. You see, Mahal has not improved to me since after Backlash. I honestly don't think so. Like, after the entrance, after he debuted the entrance that I still love to this day, nothing. After the entrance, nothing. I don't care. I I don't like. Period. Um. So yeah, Corbin ends the matchup in disqualification. He walks away. I, I, I don't want to talk about this. This is sad. I want to cry. I want to cry right now. I want to cry right now. So Barry Corbin was walking out the ring, and I'm like, bro, you got a weak champion behind you. What are you doing? He's walking and walking and walking. I'm like, okay, he's not going to cash in then. He's walking. So dramatic as hell. He slowly turns. Look at his briefcase. Got back in the ring. Tells the referee, Mike Yoda, I'm going to cash in this briefcase. And then Mike Yoda goes to the ring announcer and says, bro, he's cashing in. And I thought it was going to be one of those situations where John Cena was going to get involved. You know, that Corbin was going to get the briefcase. And, nah, I'm not cashing in. I canceled the cash-in attempt. You know, and that's it. But, no! Cash-in. Everything was official. Referee ring the bell. Mahal got to his feet. Cena got up on the apron. Not go, uh, Cena got knocked down by Corbin. And Jinder Mahal had the balls to roll him up in the sloppiest way I could ever seen. Corbin's body twisted and turned. And... Still had his shoulders down for the three. So, okay, so let's backtrack a little quick. Okay, okay. So, I'm not going to repeat what everyone else said already. I'm not. I am not going to repeat. All right, we all know. Okay, we all know, all right? Bahal got his ass whooped by Cena and still had the balls to pin Baron Corbin one, two, three. All I can say is that, that just, that's just sad. I feel like if you're going to waste a bear, uh, a cash-in, do it on somebody that the crowd will go nuts for and feel sorry for and will tweet about it and, 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 and then, like, chant about it the next day or the next week, you know? Like a Chad Gable or Daniel Bryan-esque, you know? Not a Baron Corbin. This guy's fucked, like everyone else been saying. This guy's done for. Ain't nobody going to give a shit about Baron Corbin now. Baron who? Huh? Oh, the loser that fucked up? Yeah, him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that. That's what people are going to be saying now. Oh, Baron Corbin? Who's that? Only, only Baron Corbin I know was the guy that fucking fucked up on cashing in the briefcase. That had to go to the stage to realize he could cash in. Yeah, that, that guy. Yeah, the lone wolf. The lone failure! Yeah. I think I should call him that. The lone failure. Yeah. He's a loner and a failure. The lone failure. That's what people should call him from now on. Because that's what he is since he failed to cash in. We haven't had a failed cash in since 2013. We 2017, bro. It's been three and a half years since then. It happened in October 2013. Damien Sandow was the one to fail. Going up against John Cena for the World Heavyweight title. Around that time. 
And then three years later, let's see, we had Seth Rollins cash in, we had Sheamus cash in, we had Dean Ambrose cash in, and then Baron Corbin gets the briefcase, and what happens? <gasps> he fails. So, I know we're not going to get a, I hope to God we get a Raw Money in the Bank next year. If not, they correct this, this, this mishap, and they have a, a dual branded Money in the Bank match or two Money in the Bank matches in one night or three. Three Money in the Bank matches. I will take three Money in the Bank matches that night on the pay per view. One for the women for both men. Um, and, you know, the one for Raw, one for SmackDown. Or if they might even want to be too greedy, too greedy and uh, too risky, uh, they would do two Raw Money in the Bank ladder matches, two SmackDown Live Money in the Bank matches. I won't be surprised if they do that at all. What I just said, I won't be surprised if they do that. But, yeah. Baron Corman, uh, he's in a hole that he cannot dig himself out of. And I feel sorry. This show sucked, by the way. This entire show. I just, I, I, I rushed uh, of, of washing dishes for this? Oh, my God. <laughs> Whatever. Let's just get to SummerSlam predictions. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. So, let me, let me do this live. I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> I'm in the mood to not care. Uh, let me see. WWE Sum, SummerSlam. I, I'm really doing this now. I, I know. Probably, oh, you should have done it before you start recording, dumb it. I don't care. That's what, that's, what Smackdown, that's what SmackDown does. They don't care. Why should I care if they don't care? SmackDown can suck a... Oh, boy. That's all I can say, bro. I mean, honestly. There's only, like, a couple of matches. This show this show is five, six hours, bro. Including the pre-show. This show is too much. I can't. I can't. <coughs> I hope the Universal title match is the main event. They have to. I'll be damned if it's not. They have to, bro. They have to. I beg. Please. Okay? All right, so... Let's just get to the match previews because I need to see what matches are announced because there's going to be a lot of matches that I don't know what's there. Okay. Okay, so... Okay, so let me count how many matches are there. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight banks in my bank account. I'm sorry. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bands in my bank account. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. That, that that's fucking that's fucking catchy. It's a lit, bro. All right, so we got, so we got. I don't know why they put get your SummerSlam tickets in the match preview. I don't understand that. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We got eleven matches tonight, people. We got eleven matches this Sunday. Eleven matches. So, we got the Cruiserweight title match. We got Tozawa taking on Neville. <sighs> okay. So, with the champ defended against Neville. We have Tozawa taking on Neville. Rematch from Raw. Who do I see winning? I'm going to say Tozawa. I don't think Neville's going to regain the, ti the title this time. I really don't. I don't think he's going to regain it. And then if they do, then I'm going to get upset because, bruh, I'm really tired of back and forth with championships. I really am. Styles and Owens was like the final nail in the coffin with that crap. I, I really am. I can't stop that. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm done with that. So, Tozawa is my pick. That's number one. Uh, Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Title. Sasha Banks is my pick. I love Alexa Bliss. She is beautiful every god dang week. Every week she gets better and better. It's like she's buying new makeup and she's putting that on every week and she's just getting better and better. But I'm kind of done with her being champ. To be honest, bro, I'm I'm I, I, I'm kind of done. You know, you you had your. Your 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 months of fame, you know, bless you've been um, you've been like uh, a great champ, you know, first ever uh, Raw and SmackDown Women's Champ, you know, all that good stuff. But it's time for you to move on, bruh. It's time for you to move on. All right, so I pick Sasha Banks. So Tazawa and Sasha Banks are my picks. We have the Demon Finn Balor. Take a thank God, thank God they got rid of the Demon King. That is the most stupidest thing like ever, bro. Demon King. 
Did he win the, the King of the Ring? That would make sense. Then when the King of the Ring, they shut your hole about King, about Demon King. Shut, just stop, Demon King. Get out of here. The Demon Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. Finn Balor, simple. Why? Because Bray Wyatt won. 50-50 booking. We're its ugly head. So it's Ozawa, Banks, Balor. Big Cass versus Bit. Who cares, bro? Who cares? Big Cass because he's young. Simple. Um, Randy Orton versus Ruru. Um, I don't care. The RKO was my the RKO on Rusev on two on Tuesday night SmackDown was uh, on SmackDown yesterday was the best thing on the show. And maybe Gable there too. You know. Cause, Cause, that was the definition of out of nowhere. I did not expect Randy Orton to show up and RKO Rusev like that. I did not. The, like Rusev had the camera on him, and he's like Randy Orton, RKO one thing, like, bro. And I am sick and tired. And I probably said this before, JBL, bro. I can I can handle you being on commentary. If I can if I can handle Michael Cole, I can handle you. Okay, um. Shut your hole about it only takes one. No, it don't. Guarantee you it will not take one uh, at SummerSlam. Just saying. It didn't take one to beat Brock Lesnar last year. It didn't take one to be, uh, 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 <laughs> someone, AJ Styles, Cena, I don't know. You know, it, it does not take one. If it was, then it would be one of the most devastating moves that people gotta watch out for. But it's not. It's like it's like Skittles. You get one, and you ask again, you get another, and another, and another, and another. Until you can't take no more. That's what that is. That's what an RKO is. Candy. You ask for one, and then you want more and more and more until you can't take no more. Who the wins? Rusev, because he lost to Cena, so he'll get a win at, against Randy Orton. Randy Orton beat Mahal, so he, he's justified. So, so my picks are Tozawa, Sasha Banks, Finn Balor, Big Cass, Ruru. Simple. New Day versus Uso, tag team titles. Usos. Simple. I, 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 don't, I can't stress that enough. I, now, okay. Okay, this match might be the only one I'm going to say this. I want the Usos to win. But what I'm actually predicting instead, it will be the new deck because the Usos already beat Kofi and Woods on SmackDown, so there's no chance of the Usos uh, winning the titles back. So what I want is the Usos, but what I'm going to pick, you know, as official, as officially, uh, as an official pick, it will be the new deck. So the new day, Rusev, Big Cass, Finn Balor, Sasha Banks, and Tozawa are my picks. For this Sunday. Natty versus uh, Naomi for the women's title. This, I, I, I don't really care much. But, uh, I'm going to say Naomi wins and then cash in by Carmella. Yeah. That's all I need to, uh, that's all I need to say. U.S. title match. H.G. E. Styles, Kevin Owens, C. McMahon as special referee. AJ Styles is winning this match. I don't think Kevin Owens needs the United States title. I think Kevin Owens needs to go after the WWE Championship. Like I've been saying about the Miz, the Miz should be not should not be worrying about the Intercontinental title. Should not worry about the Intercontinental title. Go after the Big Cheese, bro. Go after the Universal Championship on Raw. You know, Kevin Owens needs to do the same thing. Forget about the mid card. Go after the big cheese. The, the, the WWE title. Do that. Like, get rid of the stigma of you only being Universal Champion that you lost to Goldberg in 20 seconds. Please. Johnson versus Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin needs to win. After that debacle on SmackDown, he needs this win. If he doesn't win, this guy is truly truly done get the gold shovel we're burying somebody tonight yeah um mahal versus nakamura nakamura simple if jinder mahal wins (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. And then the Universal Championship match. Anybody but Brock Lesnar. I don't care who. I don't care if you hate Roman Reigns like anyone hates Hitler. I don't give a fuck. I do not want Brock Lesnar walking out of Brooklyn as Universal Champion. Let him leave. Let him go fuck Sable. Let him go hunt down deers up in the great nation known as Canada. I don't care. Let him leave. I don't care. Go to the Octagon. Go to UFC. I might watch you there still. But shit. Anything. Anyone. Strowman. Joe. Well, I'm most... I'm. I'm more to Joe and Strowman than Roman, but at this point, anyone. So, let's just let's just be clear now. Tozawa, Banks, Balor, Big Cass, Ruru, Rusev, New Day, AJ Styles, Naomi, and then Cashin, Baron Corbin, Nakamura, and anyone but Brock Lesnar. That's my pick. Though that, that's my pick. So there you go. There's your SummerSlam. Uh, Preview and predictions. I'm not going to go through it. I'm not going to talk about this one in detail because I don't need to. Because why the fuck would I waste my time doing that? You know? It's all there on the, on the damn WB.com. So go check it out there. <laughs> just, just to be honest, bro. So yeah, there, there you guys have it. There's your SummerSlam preview predictions. And me talking about Ron SmackDown. SmackDown made a big, big mistake. Huge mistake on Barry Corbin. Uh, cashing in. Fail. Uh, the lone fail. The lone failure. Just saying. If you guys can, leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Thank you guys for uh, sticking with me if you made it this if you made it this far. Uh, 41 minutes of your time. Or 42 minutes. By the time I, I, I end this recording. Um, yeah, leave a like, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will be doing some of some reactions this Sunday, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys Sunday. Thank you at Michael87 for this beautiful layout, and I'll see you guys next time. And I'm out later. Don't forget, Universal Smoke videos Thursday and Friday. I'm out later. <laughs>